Yo, what's good, everybody? It's your boy Dom coming back to you guys with another video. This video is going to be about cloud software provider Blackbot. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that right. But they have agreed to pay a $3 million settlement due to charges brought to them because they failed to disclose the full impact of a 2020 ransomware attack that they actually suffered. This is no joke. We're going to see what really happened, what the details are and if they actually were doing what they're supposed to do or if they're unlike some companies where they kind of lie and kind of brush it under the rug to kind of hide their appearance as well as protect their reputation so let's get to it as you see on my left i got my cyber threat intelligence report so black bod like how i said again they did agree to pay a three million dollar settlement because of um they really just failed to recognize, implement, as well as inform management, law enforcement, and I believe their shareholders about the actual incident and the full pack and full impact of it. They did say it did affect over 13,000 customers. So that's a lot just to begin with already. I believe it's the Security and Exchange Commission. They're the ones that are actually charging, or I guess you could say suing or, um, you know, filing a lawsuit against the uh so the cloud software provider so they're the ones that are actually they're the ones that are actually actually they're the ones that are actually doing it but they did say that the company kind of they I don't want to say they brushed it under the rug they agreed to pay the three million dollars but they did not confirm or validate that that actual uh data got out I'm guessing so they're trying to make it I don't know if they're trying to make it to protect their actual uh their um I want to say their uh their pride or not even their pride, just their reputation. I don't know if that was the reason why they actually did that, but they are um, agreeing to pay a, a civil penalty for that. And they didn't confirm again, like the, the, they didn't really confirm or deny any of the findings by SEC. So they're trying to make it to where um, like, yes, they're going to pay it, but they're trying to make it to seem like, Hey, we didn't do anything wrong or nothing crazy actually happened but in reality it actually it actually did and they even said that this um organization by the incident infected a lot of more enter entities such as charities foundations nonprofits, universities all worldwide across the country including united states united kingdom canada and even you know the netherlands so that's kind of um the impact or the broader impact that it actually has they did say the breach happened in around May 2020, but the but they actually provided an update on the incident in July of 2020. And what they were basically saying was that the attackers didn't gain access to donor bank accounts details as well as social security numbers, but it was later identified that the threat actors did that. They were the ones that actually got access to the banking and even login information from customers as well as getting access to other stuff due to the bank's unencrypted systems and in the end the company did fail to report the situation to management and lack proper disclosure controls and procedures like how i said again i believe since they are a public company they do have the obligation to like they have it's basically like their duty to tell their investors hey this is what's going on within the company this is what's going on with your information and this is how we can stay safe they can't really just put it under the rug yes they can until they get caught which is kind of what they did here but uh that's kind of their obligation to do so right because if i'm an investor i want to make sure that hey my money's safe i want to make sure my information is safe and i want to make sure that if this incident that this incident if it gets out what is it going to do to the stock as well as the financials and earnings of the company so that, that's again they kind of fail to implement that and uh, inform the actual management and investors so as the attack tactics techniques and procedures go on i kind of had a quick six or seven due to it because it's also i'm explaining it from a ransomware attack i did read the um other article that was back in 2020 I think that was uh I just read it like today or the the, the yesterday, but it kind of broke down the the situation and it really say like how they got in. But usually I kind of take these TTPs from this perspective of any ransomware attack, right? 
So as far as like any ransomware attack goes, it's going to be impact. So it's going to be data manipulation, data destruction. And then I will add this, but probably system uh, shutdown slash reboot, or I guess uh, information data encrypted for impact. But um, what it is, is that once they get a hold of that data, then they're able to basically do whatever they want, manipulate it, destroy it. And they are saying that social security numbers got out as well as banking information. So all that stuff can be used for identity fraud, phishing attempts, and the, you know, the whole nine. Resource development, compromised infrastructure. This is a compromise in the company's infrastructure. The threat actors are able to go in, steal the login and banking information from users and customers due to the bank's unencrypted systems. And because of that, that was a big compromise in their infrastructure. Privilege escalation, I'm an attacker. Exploitation for privilege escalation, I'm trying to get admin. I'm trying to get the money. I'm trying to get all, all of it. I want it all. That's what these threat actors are thinking, and that's the mindset that they have. They're not too much different from us, right? I believe I probably explained that in a couple of my other videos that I'll post in the description as well as at the top of the screen, but I kind of have privilege escalation in every video because the threat actor is trying to gain privileges to certain areas of the network, and then that allows them to actually access the sensitive information. Next, I got reconnaissance. This is more of a hypo, uh, hypothetical. Besides the gather victim identity information, which was specifically the actual uh, banking login information and sensitive, some other sensitive data with social security numbers, but fishing for information is, hey, I'm able to gather, I'm able to gather that information and possibly call cause identity fraud because you know someone's social security number that's basically you. And if someone gets that, that's unauthorized to have it, they can basically become you and start cloning things that you may have, like credit cards and things like that. I mentioned how phishing is dangerous in my top five tips to being safe online video. So I hope, encourage you guys to check that video out. That one was really informative and it kind of goes hand in hand with this. Um, oops, I did a typo. See, everybody messes up. I didn't mean to put two resource development. So let me just, I guess, compromise accounts again, users login information that was uh, stolen. And then credential access, again, that's the banking and login information uh, that was actually stolen. And that's what was really, you know, infected here. Again, they did say this happened in May of 2020. The incident was first a data breach, then it turned into... Um, a ransomware attack. They said that the data breach affected 13,000 customers. Again, they were able to access unencrypted banking and login information as well as sensitive information, including customers' uh, social security numbers. And even this is kind of a hit to them. I didn't even know this. I I, I don't remember like I wasn't in the industry in 2020, so I don't I don't remember this attack at all. But um, it was kind of surprising and crazy to find out that before November 2020, I guess when they were trying to get everything in, out and stuff, that they had already had 23 lawsuits against them. So these are all for class action cases in the United States and Canada. So these people were coming kind of for their blood, if you want to put it that way. And they were related to the breach that did occur um, that, that may. Lastly, mitigation and response. The company did say that they have not seen any misuse of the information that was stolen since the, the, the attack. And, you know, they haven't really seen anything since then. And they don't think it'll be misused in the future. I don't know. I highly doubt that if you get someone's social security numbers, I don't know if there's any signs of it's been leaked. But if you get someone's security, social security, you're basically them. So I don't totally agree with them saying it, it won't be misused in the future. It may not have been misused without them knowing and the person that has the data is keeping it a secret, but for sure, for sure that it's good. That's not gonna, um, that's not gonna happen. They also even said on just another thing to add, I don't know if this could, you could consider this mitigation or just organizational impact as a whole. They did say in a July, 2020 press uh, release that's on their actual company security page that they did, uh, they actually paid the ransom requested by the attackers after receiving confirmation that all their data was destroyed. 
So right there, ding, 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 they paid the ransom. What does that mean? Paying the ransom equals a target. Now the threat actor can come back and keep targeting them because they know that they're going to pay a ransom and other threat actors will start targeting them too and other ransomware groups because they know, hey, this company is weak. Not in necessarily like as a bad company, but they're weak as in, hey, we can target them because they know they can't afford their resources being lost. And because of that, they're going to pay their ransom. It's just like this. It's like a bully on the block. If you keep letting him beat you up, you're going to be a target and keep on going. But if you stand up to him and punch him in the nose or, you know, you know, stand your ground, then yes, you may get beat up or yes, you may not. But at least you have his respect and at least you don't take, you know, stop being taken granted for, you know, anymore. So that's kind of the little, you know, comparison I would say that it is to here. And then, yep, they agreed to settle the charges. So uh, they're paying that three million. I don't know if that's really if they should be paying more or they should be paying less. Let me know. But this was a pretty good article that. I did fine and it was cool, but it's kind of sucks that they're still having to deal with this incident from, from over two to three years ago. So it kind of says something about either the company's way of uh, securing things as well as their reputation, because if they didn't hide it and they just told or informed them, yes, your reputation gets destroyed. I know that's probably the main thing they're trying to protect, but you got to be transparent and translucent with the customers as well as the investors. The more you hide it, the more you lie, the more in trouble you'll even be. And on top of that, you got lawsuits and you may be losing revenue because customers feel unsafe. So I don't know, man. It's just something crazy to think about. And that's really it for my report. Hope you guys liked it. This was on the Blackbaud settlement fee that they had to pay $3 million for failing to disclose the full impact of the ransomware attack in 2020. Hope everyone enjoyed, liked it. Hope you learned something today. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you guys want to see next. And I'm out. Peace.